container engine for Kubernetes on OK or OKE. Once you are logged into your account, it's available under developer services. Developer services, Kubernetes clusters. The prerequisite for Kubernetes, however, is OCI, OCI CLI. If I show you on my machine, this is my machine, OCI. Let me see if I installed it, uh, history. All right, fine. I need to install OCI first, OCI CLI. Then only it will work. Let's create a cluster first. I'm going to create in a root compartment. Or let's create in OKE. Create cluster. It is actually fully managed service from Oracle. Quick create, custom create. Quick create will create a VCN, Internet Gateway, Net Gateway, Service Gateway, Kubernetes Cluster and Worker Nodes and Node Pools. Everything will be created. That's the best thing. Give a name to the cluster, whatever name you want, which version you want, you will see the different version available. Private endpoint, public endpoint. Node type is virtual node or managed node. You see that Kubernetes Worker Nodes are provisioned compute instances in your tenancy. You are charged for core hours those instances use. And this is our virtual resources to execute your Kubernetes pods are provisioned dynamically as needed. You are charged for resources used only. And then private and public worker. So this is what you can have private endpoint, public endpoint, managed or virtual. So let's say managed private worker nodes, the shape. The Oracle operating system, number of nodes it will be creating, and that's it. Create a basic cluster. Advanced features, what all advanced features we have. Let's go back what all we have advanced features. I, there were nothing advanced earlier. Boot volume size, image, nothing else. Labels, no big deal. Uh, this private SSH, public SSH key is if you want to access the nodes from your machine, which we don't want generally. So there is nothing, no advanced feature required apart from the size and all which you can change here. So create basic cluster and create cluster. It is that simple team. It will take 15-20 minutes. Once the cluster is ready, I will show you how to work with it. This is session 10, Kubernetes cluster on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Once again, I am highlighting it is fully managed service. Oracle container engine for Kubernetes, setting up Kubernetes in cluster in OCI. You saw that it took two minutes. Nothing else. It was wizard based. You selected what you wanted and then everything will be done automatically. If you ask, if you are wondering that how it is happening in the back end, it is simply a Terraform running. Installing Kubernetes dashboard, exploring your cluster. So when we are creating Kubernetes cluster on OCI, what is managed by OCI? where Oracle is responsible and where you are responsible. So what is customer managed and what is Oracle managed? In the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, the OCI Kubernetes cluster is managed by Oracle. Cluster management, high availability, three master ETCD across three availability domains and container engine dashboard. As it was available as an add-on, right now it is not available, it was disabled, it was removed. What you are responsible for, what you manage, the OCI account or tenancy, bare metal clusters and nodes, VM based clusters and nodes. So who pay for what? What is paid and what is free? This service is completely free. You don't pay for this much. So you pay for only for the OCI resources used to run your cluster virtual virtual machine storage load balancer etc so whatever you select you pay only for that that's how the kubernetes cluster on oke works on oci works so container native developer friendly enterprise ready these are all the features of uh, oke so why when we say cloud container native it uses standard Docker and Kubernetes, deploy standard and op open upstream Docker and Kubernetes versions for compatibility across environments. Registry integration is a full Docker version 2 compatible private registry to store and manage images. Container engine deploy and operate containers and clusters. Full integration to cloud networking and storage. 
leverage the enterprise class networking load balancing and persistent storage of oracle cloud infrastructure these are the features when you say container container native developer friendly use your favorite continuous integration to push containers to registry then kubernetes to deploy to uh, clusters and manage the operations full rest api automate the workflow create and scale clusters through full rest api open standards docker based runtime worker node ssh access and standard kubernetes are used enterprise ready simplified cluster operations fully managed highly available registry master nodes and control plane one click quick create that's what we did for secure private worker node and subnet if you want to use enterprise load on bare metal machines that can also be selected for high availability infrastructure as service combine kubernetes with bare metal shapes for raw performance deploy kubernetes clusters across multiple availability domains for resilient applications team based access controls control team access and permissions to clusters the use cases container use cases lift and shift web logic application so what you do is for example we have database oracle this is web logic server web logic server web logic application so you containerize it by writing a docker file so you write a docker file and you have containers running one is for application one is for web logic server and then what you can do is in oci you can create a ci cd pipeline in developer cloud service dev cs oracle cloud infrastructure have dev cs which is a fully managed service platform as a service to be precise which gives you fully automated service ci cd pipeline where you can define your ci cd components so you define ci cd tool chain in dev cs you create a pipeline and once the build is done it will automatically push the images to the registry i am talking about ocir that is oracle cloud infrastructure registry then pull the web logic and operator images from registry to your kubernetes container engine for kubernetes that is oke trust me this is a full integration available where you can use dev cs platform as a service facility to pull the source code it will build that into images it will push the images to registry and then you can deploy that into kubernetes uh, engine so you can deploy images in your production kubernetes for worker nodes where we have well web logic operator managing web logic domains web logic application server the database part can be migrated to autonomous transaction processing atp or adw autonomous database so full migration can happen with these steps similarly if you are using a refactoring of an application monolith application that also can be done monolith application where we have a application server plus data everything in user interface into one application with the data store so you can refactor it you can convert it into microservices data source microservice app server data access and user interface and on the oci you can create a ci cd pipeline for the same the way i talked about in the previous slide developer cloud service dev cs so create a container pipeline using jenkins or uh, dev cs then once the images are built they are pushed to oracle cloud infrastructure registry and then you pull the images to deploy them into kubernetes cluster that is oke so deploy the images for production kubernetes worker nodes and my containers running microservices so this is another use case where we call it as lift and shift your on premises monolith application to cloud with microservices based application creating kubernetes cluster in oci i just now demonstrated it however the limitation is monthly credit have 
I am using going on monthly credit because my payment is monthly basis. You have a limit of three clusters per OCI region with thousand nodes in each cluster. And if you are using pay as you go, uh, sorry, my my account is pay as you go, or promo account has limit of one cluster only. Must also have a compute instance quota to launch cluster worker nodes in AD or across AD for high availability. Also need to have required policy in the root compartment, something like allow service OKE to manage all resources in tenancy. This is the policy we create in identity and access management. The user who is creating this must be either a part of admin group or a group to which a policy grant the appropriate container engine for Kubernetes permissions. Something like this. Allow group group name to manage cluster family in tenancy. So these are the example policies which are required to create a Kubernetes engine cluster. And this is a screen grab I demonstrated. Developer services, Kubernetes clusters, quick create, and then I entered the details, which version, the cluster name, compartment, Kubernetes version, private endpoint, public endpoint, private worker node, public worker node. Two more options are added now, managed or virtual. So after that, uh, it will show you the summary. And this is what we noticed. Just click on close. The Kubernetes container engine for Kubernetes will be created. So let's see the status of our uh, Kubernetes clusters on or OKE, whether it is ready or not. Let's take a look. So close it. Active. Cluster is already active, or node pool is active, and there are three nodes are still creating. Uh, the nodes are being created. Let's see the status. You click on create and uh, it is creating the nodes right now. So it is launching three nodes. So it will create the machines, launch the, you know, create uh, the cluster and everything will be done. When the cluster is ready, interesting part comes here. When the cluster is ready, you will see that uh, quick start. So you simply need kubectl or this is a cloud shell access. And if you want to access it cl using cloud shell, you just need to execute this one. If you want to access it locally from your machine, you need to install OCI. And then once the OCI is installed and it is verified, then you use the same set of command what you did. Make a directory in home.kube which you have done. And then you run this OCI command. It will set up the kube config file if you see here. It will generate and place a kube config file uh, with your details. And then you start using your kube config file. It, it's as simple as that. So the commands will remain the same. Process will remain the same. DNF install. Python 3 OCI CLI. This will install OCI CLI. Quite easy. I'll do that and it'll take two minutes. I'll show you my complete uh, example of uh, accessing the Oracle Kubernetes cluster from my local machine. So once I have that, what I will do from here now onward is I'll go out to my account settings and I'll need my account settings to configure OCI CLI because it'll use the user OCID, tenancy OCID, and the region name. So I need to do that. Let us see the status. Developer services. It takes time. You know that it is installing, it is configuring, so it is quite obviously that it takes time. The machines, uh, nodes are ready, but still Kubernetes condition is not ready because it's still working. So we have to wait. After some time, it will be into ready state. The cluster state is in ready state. You see that worker nodes and everything is ready. Now I want to access it from the cloud shell. We will go to the cluster and click on cluster shell. Quick start, access cluster. I want to access from cloud shell. So I just need to launch the cloud shell and execute this command. And you can simply execute by clicking on copy and pasting the command here. After that, it will be easy. In the meanwhile, here also on the server, uh, my OCI CLI is installed and I can configure it OCI setup config, which is mandatory. It will ask me the user OCID and uh, tenancy OCID. So user OCID, I'm specifying the user OCID. Let me open this in another tab. So my user OCID is available in my profile. Copy, paste the user OCID. Then tenancy OCID is available under my account under tenancy name. 
I'll paste my tenancy UCID also and then my region which is US Ashburn 1 generate the key yes so I need to copy the public key cat dot OCI OCI public key this OCI public key I need to copy to my account copy and I need to copy it in under my profile under API keys I'll just show you API keys I'm deleting the existing API key I'm pasting the current new API key paste API key and paste option and now you are good to go now you can access your cluster from local machine and I can show you OCI so these are my availability domains mv dot kube to kube for the time being I am taking the backup of my existing cluster and yes now you can run the command kubectl get nodes and that's how it is it will show me my worker nodes all the nodes get pods hyphen o wide so whatever you are trying hyphen o wide hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespaces so exactly so this is my cloud shell access same way if I want to exit access it from my local machine I can use local access I make a directory with this so I just execute the commands you don't need anything else make a directory dot kube and then to access the kube config file we see in cloud native public endpoint so copy this command and you are done that's it you just have to execute two commands locally now whatever commands you are doing you are execute you can execute those commands here so these are the pods which are available my on my OCI account hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespaces so team uh, take note that I am working on my Oracle cloud infrastructure and this is my uh, Kubernetes cluster on OCI you can see the IP address also and the nodes also see the IP address these are all my nodes on my OCI so when you are working with the Kubernetes cluster from local machine you can do it like this that's what I wanted to discuss I am terminating my cluster now I don't need it it was only only for the demo purpose so I am terminating it so I simply specify this here and delete it it will delete the cluster